The greatest feeling in the world was holding my own gun. I'm hypertensive, but all my decisions been wholesome. My independence had me flipping on siblings I stole from. Said I'm just big and loud. Well, half a pound is my silent treatment. I punched out plugs I could have stopped from eating. Stash of the Prada. That's how a nigga got up. Gun in the mass in the grass, it's a pop up. I was Robin Hood with the stock, don't get shot up. Now I'm watching Robin Hood in my stocks, they just shot up. That was an ill call, right? What you was y'all doing at the, mo at the we moment? We in the crib recording, mm -hmm. right? I get this call from my lawyer, Theo. Right. And of course at this time it's 50's lawyer as well and he's like, yo, Eminem is really playing this mixtape nonstop, mm. right? Mm. Now, <clears throat> if you know Eminem's history, his security guards, you got Box, they got Craig, they got house, they all from 40P, they all from Queens. So they already know what's going on in Queens. Mm -hmm. And if you're from Queens, you know Fifth is the next one at this time, if you really tapped in. Right. So they playing- Or if you're not that tapped in, guess, like- Yeah, but they playing Guess Who's Back and they playing 50 Cent of the Future, future. when they driving them around. All of a sudden, he here. He already met Fifth mm -hmm. in the 90s. So, you met 50 in the 90s? Yeah, you go back, you mm -hmm. see a pick with Fifth, Punch, uh, Punchline, Wordsworth, Wordsworth, yeah, Wordsworth. Wordsworth. Yeah, 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 yeah, yeah. Lyrics Lounge days. Lyrics Lounge days. Back when- Fifth was outside. He would try yeah. to be in the mix. And, mm. and, and it was with the outsiders from out of Jersey. He was- Outsiders, exactly. New York all the time. Exactly. Rod gotcha. Digger, boyfriend- Point Pace of One. Of, of, yeah, yep. At that time. Young Z. Mm. So he was in that mix. And so he heard, he knew Fifth, but this is the new Fifth. This is the after he got shot. Mm. The records was just different, bro. Mm. Just crazy. He was going crazy and M loved it. So he called Theo. And Theo called the crib. I looked at Fifth. Fifth said, Book the flight. So that how did it. he get how did he even get to Eminem's ears? Through the mixtape. Through the mixtape. Through, through, through the, through the, the mix driver. Mix through the, driver. the driver. Okay, okay, okay I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, I got the you. Security got guards. You. They were right. playing that shit nonstop in the car. Mm. Mm. And then he got onto it and then he kept going nonstop. And that's when he realized this is something he wanted to do. So which book he the was flight. smart of, yeah. And M was the one. And he was like, yo, we're gonna do this with Dre. So M made that whole call and told us to come to LA. They doing the eight mile soundtrack as we go. Yeah. That's how Wingster ended up on that soundtrack. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. So we go in the studio and it's like a big film screen, and it's Dre, Jimmy, Paul Rosenberg, M, and it's me, 50, and Theo in there. Mm. And that meeting was a game changer. Mm. Mm. It was the way that you guys expected it to go? Exactly the way. Even better. Mm. This, you know, I ain't never, this is Dr. Dre, bro. This is Eminem, <laughs> like, yo, the hell. You know what I'm saying? So we gonna right. meet them. You thinking like, yo, this is, these are legends. These are mm. the ones. So we got in there, we, Fifth was already ready. Fifth knew how to handle meetings. He was ready. Mm. So he got in there, he did it. He sold it, they, they was all in. And mm. next thing you know, in the club. Next thing you know, we, Come back to Cali in the club, do all those records with Dre, go to Detroit, cut them records with Dre, cut them with M, M start mixing them, M telling me, yo, bring the sessions. Yo, bring Poor Little Rich, bring Many Men. He start adding on to it, mm -hmm. start really bringing that. Like he really showed me some shit. Eminem did. Eminem did. Was you there for the In the Club video shoot? Yeah, I was there. Shug pulled up. Now, that's a good story right there, man. Because <laughs> I was not only there, I was outside. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people was outside when Shook pulled up. Everybody, security and all, doors closed when Shook pulled up. God damn. Nobody, everybody, I got, I'm going to be honest, they were scared as fuck, bro. <laughs> so me and my homies, like, this is fifth. This is our food. We about to eat, bro. Right. Fuck that. Right. Mm -hmm. So me, my boy Gio Smurf, uh, my boy uh, Marcus, a whole bunch of homies from the hood, bro. We went outside and just let them know we not scared, bro. Mm -hmm. And he just was there staring at us, looking at us. You know what I mean? And then we was there, bro. But his issue wasn't with y'all. No, nah, it was with Dre. But right. he was trying to scare everybody off, which mm -hmm. worked for everyone that stayed in the building. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but then he seen some real hey, niggas that's coming Come outside. On, man. Like, it's like, crazy. Not it's scared, crazy. Bro. I'm not, not laughing because it's funny. No, nah, nah, but like... that's real. Now, nah, every, yeah, every rapper real. was inside, everybody. Dre, everybody stayed inside. Mm. It was the homies, me and the homies. I was the only one in this industry that was outside. 
Mm. I heard everybody else from the hood. I, was I, heard, M, I heard M was outside. No, he wasn't. Well, no, he wasn't. He wasn't. Tony told the story different? He wasn't outside. Yayo wasn't outside either. Oh, mm. well, so okay. We was outside. You know what I mean? We was protecting what we was there to protect. Mm. And we let Shook know. And he had a whole bunch of, and they, nothing they could do, bro. Right. Nothing. Mm. That, you mm. know what? Mm. Thank God it didn't go left. Right. Exactly. Thank God. I'd rather yeah. that because he they could have just right. started shooting or whatever. Yeah. But we was out there letting them know. Either way, we was not. We was ready, well, bro. Well, you got to think about it too. Like, Suge is not used to people saying no. Like, yeah, I'm not scared not. of you. Yeah. 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 So not, when you bro. got people that stand up again, like nigga, nah, we're not doing that. Not not here. Not today. Nah, I right. mean, it's even, not happening. Even after that, Suge will call my call with my phone and just make certain calls to see how you respond. And if you responded wrong, then he know what to do. Right. You want to but test your te- check your temperature. Wrong, bro. Mm-hmm. It's all about how you respond to these dudes mm-hmm. with these calls, bro. Give me a right. response. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> is that the response or is that the answer they're giving nah, me a response? They're going to have to go through it because this is this <laughs> right, right. the time you got to be on. If you know, you know. If you know, right. you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I ain't teaching them that one. <laughs> 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 so the album comes out and you're off to the races. It's going nuts. Eminem co-signs it. 50 is all over the place. And those old beefs start to resurface. Like the how to rob little frictions. They're not beefs anymore, but now here comes more shit. Mm-hmm. And you on the front line. But now you're you're an officially like an executive now. Mm-hmm. Like What was that transition like? Yeah, what was your role? Because you, from producer to, to what? So went from producer... Executive, management. executive producer and manager. You sound manager. Okay. Co-manager, sound- right? Mm-hmm. So Chris Lighty became the main manager and then I was the co-manager. So I'm with him every day. Mm-hmm. I'm on the road. I'm with him every day. So I started meeting everyone and having all the connections. For me, it just became me learning how to really excel in this business. I was already in the loop with everyone. So right, for me, right. it was easy. Mm-hmm. And he knew I knew how to communicate. Mm-hmm. Clearly. You know what I'm saying? Without right. no problems. You know what I mean? So we just knocked it out. It was a success run. And then after that, we hired everyone we needed from security, everything we needed. The squad was right, built right, drivers, everything was tight, mm-hmm. solid. There was not no little hole in the wall, bro. Mm. And we moved right from that point on. And didn't look back, didn't cut a corner, didn't try to save no money or nothing. We did it all right. Mm. You know what I mean? And he mm. moved right. We get into the shows, everything. He ain't a bulletproof. Now, mind you, we the front line. I'm not in the bulletproof. Hmm. So we, anything can happen to it you. It's going to happen to us. You know what I mean? Right. But we had to sacrifice that. Right. Mm. Risk it. The risk. And Thank it, you. it's never been a situation where like you've no, gotten out and it's like, oh shit. This is the first time I realized, and my boy Free will tell you this, like, no more limos, bro. No more limos. Because we went to Ohio, Ohio, same place where T.I. Homie got shot. We yeah. went to the same club, bro. They don't play out there. Cincinnati. Mm. You leave that club, they following you, bro. Mm. We in a limo. These niggas shoot up the limo, bro. Now we all in a limo ducking. What? This was like, oh, after this, no limo. So you can't really be seen like, oh, that's them. Was the limo mm. bulletproof? Hell nah, no, bro. Right. Damn. Damn. Hell no, more that's limos. crazy. Hell no. Limos. <laughs> but after that, that's when it was like, we going to move like this. We going to move like that. No limos and none of that. We going to get in the vans and the truck. trucks and all that and start moving differently. But yeah, nah, that shit, shit got real. Certain yeah. cities is crazy. Yeah, no, I mean, no, I, I, I came home from jail in 2021 May. I met Fifth for the first time in like November, right? Uh, through one of my men's. Um, shout out to um Trigger Op. Um, and we met up at a, a Foxwoods Casino, mm. right? So he was like, "Yo, champ, pull up!" Boom, boom, boom. So I pulled up, and I'm like, "Yo, where this nigga at?" Like. I, as far as what you're saying, I'm like, yo, this nigga didn't pull up the regular way a nigga pull up. No. This nigga was somewhere else, bro. He was somewhere else, and I didn't see him until he got to the fucking stage. Bro. Yeah, very calculative. Man. Yeah, I was like, oh shit, where just the fuck this, this nigga just like came that. out of nowhere, bro. Yeah. But I, I understand what you're saying, and that's happened multiple times. I've been around him on different occasions yeah. in the city or whatever. It ain't that easy, bro. And it, you're not just gonna get an extra fifth no, like that. Not like that. It, it doesn't sound like fun. Nah. 
it sounds like a lot of work, a lot of stress, <laughs> a, lot of a lot of anxiety, yeah. a lot of pressure. Yeah, talk like, to God before God. you go out with that. going to be a show and, this oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank God for weed, man. <laughs> <laughs> you smoke your way through that, baby. Yeah. Like, hey, it, it, almost, it, bro. it almost is this part to this that doesn't, Yo, it almost well, doesn't feel worth it. Yo. Whatever you're ready to live for, you got to be ready to die for, man. That's, that's where fact. that title came from. Get that's rich or die trying. Facts. We was going to do it all, bro. And that's that's how he got it. There was no exceptions, bro. Mm-hmm. Did you ever did you ever look at it like in contemplation or retrospectively or in the moment? Like, this man survived this situation and he's excelling in his career and I'm a part of this journey. This is meant to be. I don't... I'm, I'm not even... Like I know you don't have any, you didn't have any fear, mm-hmm. but did you say to yourself like this is meant to happen, man? I'm all that shit y'all talking about over there. Y'all gonna do this, y'all gonna do that. I don't care about none of that. This niggas done survived this shit already, mm-hmm. so this is gonna happen this way, and I know it, and I believe it, and that's that. That's complete vision, bro, and that's how I felt the whole time. It's all around. Look around you, man. You can find inspiration. You can find discouragement. It all depends on you. Perception is everything. Some people just hear another song. Some people hear the greatest. A nigga used to have no chill. Nowadays I bump side A. Traffic on bumper to bumper, stuck on the highway. 